Hello guys, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, where we relax and we craft and we work on a project together and just chill and hang out. And uh, tonight we are going to be continuing my uh, tweet house embroidery. So we have been color tinting it. This has been colored in with crayons. And now we're gonna go back and start stitching it. So I'm super stoked about this project. I have never done the color tinting before and it's working great. You can color tint with crayons or colored pencils, anything really. Uh, be sure to check out the videos over at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. That's where the replays for these go. This is day three on this, I think. Yeah, day three. So we're starting starting to stitch. We did all the color tinting yesterday and uh, we're gonna start stitching on top. And it really does add a cool texture. Here's our little test. We did some holly with some, uh, some little uh, stitching on top of that. So that's kind of the effect that it will have. And, uh, I've been seeing a few of them pop up in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook and they are looking so fabulous. I just think they're just the cutest. So uh, be sure to share yours if you're working on it uh, over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group there. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around. Let's get going on this. Are you just grabbed your needles, ready to go. Awesome, Gretchen. Okay, I got Zeb here with my needles. I am so excited to start stitching this. I really think the crayon added a really fun base color to it. And uh, I, it's just gonna add so much texture. Like, look at, look at this guy. I mean, it, we're adding a whole nother layer to this and I, I'm, I'm thinking it's just gonna be fun. So I thought I would start out with the house just cause I feel like I'll feel like I have a substantial amount done by doing the house first. So uh, I kind of want to use, I have like, I have tons of floss. So I, I wanted to play around with some variegated floss again. I thought that would be kind of neat because we go from, you know, this teal blue to like this dark blue and some other blues. So I thought maybe I'd use some floss that does the same thing. So I have, uh, a bunch of variegated floss, and this is from Weeks Dye Works. I'm just gonna try and pull some blues that I think might look nice. So let's let's just grab a few from here. Oh, this has some gray in. Oh, this might be just right. Oh, that's pretty. Um, what else do we got? Uh, this one's a little, this one maybe. A little darker. Ooh, maybe this is kind of like a darker version of this. All right, let's, here's a gray version. Yeah, that's, that's too gray. All right, I think let's choose from those three. Let's see over here, we have a little darker, a darker teal. I think that's not variegated enough. That's not as fun. We'll stick with these, these variegated things. So I can either do, this is more kind of just a, like a, plain blue and these, I'll zoom you guys in again, these, are, have a little bit more teal to them. I think these might just be too dark. I kind of want to try and keep it to the same color scheme as I have going here. And I, like, I'm just thinking these are too dark. So we're gonna ditch those. Quick decisions, I'm going to go to here. Are you choosing to match the crayon colors? I am not positive, Gretchen. I think, I think in general, yes, I think I will try and match the crayon colors, but I'm being kind of fluid about it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to see how it goes, but this has a lot of the teals in. It's a little darker than what I have, so it'll have like that nice dark outline still. So some teals, teals and gray. And okay, so a blue fescue. <laughs> That's uh, that's the name of this floss by Weeks uh, Weeks Dye Works. They have the funnest names for their floss. All right, I'm gonna grab some. Let's get. I'm gonna zoom you guys out again quickly though first, if I can. Let's see. Oops, wrong way. Ooh, I'm not able to zoom you guys out. There we go. 
Okay, I think we're all the way zoomed out. Let's get this guy in the hoop first. Get us going here. So this is the same hoop that I did the tracing with and the coloring with just to hold everything taut. But yeah, I think, I think I'm starting with the house just because first of all, it will, it'll feel like I got a lot done quickly, I think, by, by getting some stitches on that house. And also, that's the only color I really know what I'm doing with yet. I, I knew I kind of wanted to do a variegated blue for that, but everything else uh, I'm not really sure about. So we'll, we'll do this blue first and see what we get and then, and then go from there. All right, so I'm going to, I got a little bit off of here. I think we're gonna need quite a bit for this house. So I'm getting about two feet worth or so. Throw it back in here. I'm using my blueberry scissors today to go with all of our blues. All right, so I'm gonna separate these threads. I know some of you have seen me do this before. Uh, I think this is a fast, easy way to separate threads. It looks crazy, but it works really well. And the reason I'm separating my threads is I wanna use three strands instead of the six that come with it. And the only reason for that, for it's my personal taste of that's how thick I like the lines. Feel free to use all six for a really thick line. You can use just two. I know a lot of people use two. Use one if you just want a really thin line. Uh, my typical go-to is just three. So I'm gonna pull three strands out of here. So I'm gonna just separate one and then pull on it while all the rest bunches up behind. And then once it pops out, then the rest kind of relaxes. So I'm just gonna run my hand through that again just to keep relaxing it. And uh, we'll do that two more times and put it together. Hello from Florida. Hello guys. All right, one more. And then we'll put this to the side and then we'll put these three little strands together. Oop, dropped it. All right, um, there we go. We'll save that for later. And these three strands, I will put back together. I'm just gonna match up the ends. And this helps it not twist so much when, when you're stitching too. We did a little test on that. Um, that had been suggested to me. I, I didn't usually do it this way, separate my strands this way, but it really did help reduce twisting. All right, so I'm gonna grab my needle. We'll just thread this right away. Ah, can't get these strands together. There we go. Run my hand on that again. I'm gonna start with an away knot. Uh, you might've heard me talking about that again. Oh, thank you, Patricia. I know I'm super excited about the colors, the crayons. All right, I'm going to tie this in a knot, the, the other end. So this is gonna be my away knot. I'm gonna cut this off when I'm done and weave in the ends. And that's so I don't have any knots on the back like causing trouble like catching my threads on them or, or anything like that. Um, all right, where should we start? I was kind of like mapping it out beforehand. I'm kind of thinking I could start down here go to here, jump down here, and then come back up and then start the house, maybe. I think that'll do, let's do that. So, all right, I'm gonna start right here. So I want my thread to be a few inches away from that. And then we will get started. And that's just so we can weave it in later. Yeah, this is how we're gonna do it. All right. So I'm just gonna do a back stitch. I like the back stitch. To me, the back stitch just screams embroidery. You can see each little stitch like a little, like a little pearl strand almost. I like it. Uh, if I wanted something more organic, 
like where I don't want to see all the little stitches, then I'll do like a split stitch uh, or something else. But I, my back stitch is my go-to outlining stitch here. Wow, this is really blending in uh, this, this thread already. So, I mean, we're really just adding some texture here, which is perfectly fine. It's an experiment. Oh man, I'm excited to get stitching on this though. And it's a chance for me to break open the fancy floss again. Uh, not the fancy floss, just, just, um, just the stash. I get to start using up the stash again. That's always nice. I feel like I am, I'm using up old stuff. All right, so I'm gonna just make this one last stitch. It's kind of a big stitch, but I think it'll average out. Okay, no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know it's a slightly bigger stitch than than my other stitches. All right, then I'm gonna jump down here, go back around, and then, you know, I didn't assess for this line here, so. <laughs> I'm gonna go back around and then go up here, and then when I run out of thread, maybe I'll start here and then jump over the cardinal and do this other little bottom here. Nope, I'm not using the cone of floss. I don't even have the cone of floss up here tonight. Man, I love my cone of floss though. <laughs> I have a, um, what Bonnie's referring to is, I have, instead of like an eight yard or so skein of floss, I have a like a 2100 yard cone of floss. Um, we use them for making our embroidery kits, but they're, when you need some floss quick, it's, it's fun to have the giant, giant roll. Yeah, our mask got the giant thing of, of floss. I know, now that we're kind of wrapped up almost on this, on the uh, I Love Home quilt, the poor little uh, cone of floss is gone, that corally orange pretty cone of floss. I think that's still one of my favorite floss colors. All right, this is just like subtly variegated, which is just like the house, I think. The house is just a few different colors, um, like this thread. It kind of goes from this teal, like the same color as the house front, to like a gray, which is kind of actually a whole lot like this periwinkle down here. You know, I didn't ever use variegated floss for embroidery until the Splendid Sampler. And since then, I just love it so much for embroidery. And I think it's just because you have to embrace the color shifts. Like, you just have to go with it. Like, however, whatever the color turns into, that's, that's what happens right there. You can't plan it out. And I think maybe, maybe before that would have been a big problem for me. And that's why I never used variegated floss. But now, now I just like letting those little things happen. And, and that's kind of where the interest for me comes in. Like, oh, that's funny. It was all gray in that area there. And I would have never put gray there. But since the variegated floss went there, that's pretty neat. So now I, I just, um, I love the chance to do, use variegated floss where you're kind of forced, forced to not be so perfect and planned out, you know, it's kind of fun. It's fun if you just let it be what it's, what it's going to be. But I think this is looking pretty cute. This, this variegated floss so far. I think maybe I could have gone with the, the darker, that would have been just fine. The darker color, the darker blue, but I think I, I think I like this. We're just adding, adding that bit of texture. I can totally see using this technique again. I don't know about you guys, but I've, I had so much fun just coloring this in. The crayon lines look really cool with the floss. Yeah, I think it's looking really 
really kind of neat. Yeah, with this this texture down here. It's neat because you got different levels. You got the flat level and then you got the little extra stitching. Oh yeah, it's super fun, the variegated floss, Gretchen. Yeah, the neat thing about having tons of floss <laughs> is you have a lot of uh, interesting, interesting colors to pick from. And I'll throw this this floss. I didn't, I don't think I put this on the Facebook post here, but I will throw it up on the YouTube post and I'll, I'll put it on tomorrow's, tomorrow's Facebook live. Um, the, this, this particular floss it's by Weeks Dye Works and they, they hand dye all their, their floss colors and they just give them like the cutest names ever. Ooh, yeah. It does kind of look vintagey, doesn't it? That's always kind of fun. I like when things like vintagey or or pays homage to, you know, something something old, but then looks you know modern and pretty and cute. Um, well, not that vintage is not pretty or cute, but um, just does something a little different. It it honors the the tradition and then does something just a hair a hair different. I like that. All right, I don't have that many more. Well, I'll make this in two stitches. I don't have that much more floss left, so we will we will switch it up here in a moment. I probably could have taken a longer piece of floss. This works though. Yeah, the old is new again stuff. I love that. The variegated floss makes it look so natural. Oh, that's interesting, Georgia. Yeah, because you know nothing is perfect, so that you know this changes color every once in a while it, it does make it look like more like real life I suppose I think it definitely goes with this you know our our house here is so variegated that it kind of kind of matches vintage modern there you go <laughs> that sounds like an oxymoron isn't that is that what that is all right, I think, oh man, I think this is my last stitch and then we're gonna have to weave in the ends here already. Yep, that's that's all she wrote right there. So instead of tying a knot, here we go so far. Oh, from far away, that looks like a dark outline. Okay, I'm a, I'm a little happier with it. I, I was thinking it blended into the background too much, but I kind of like it. Oh, you did one strand. Oh, made your own uh, mix of colored floss. That's pretty cool. Ooh, I haven't done that before. That'd be kind of fun, uh, to try, to try sometime. All right. So I'm just weaving in the ends three times here. It's that third time that kind of locks in the floss. So it won't, it won't like work its way out really. I don't think. If you only go two times, you can kind of pull it and it'll still, it'll still come out, but it's that three times, it's that third turn that kind of does it. All right, let's snip that. And I am going to uh, clip off the knot from that away knot that we started with. And, uh, ooh, a 16th inch tape metallic. Ooh, that'd be fun to stitch with. That'd be, um, you'd have to kind of, tack it down almost or couch it down is, is what that's called. All right. So this away knot, now we have this little strand at the end here and we can weave that in just like how we wove that last piece in. Ooh, it's pretty the back. You can see all the different var variegation, variation of the variegation. Yeah. I like this teal and the gray together. Oops, needle popped out. It's a little shorter than I thought. All right, got to go for turn three here yet. All right, there we go. Can snip that right down by the stitches. And there, now we have no knots on the back at all. There's no knots for us to catch our thread on accidentally. Everything's just nice and flat and it looks 
looks just as good from the from the back as it does uh, from the front there. So, all right, I'm gonna grab my other piece of floss. Um, you know, it already is three strands, so I could just thread it and start right away, but I'm gonna separate all three and put them back together again, just because, you know, from our little test, uh, it does help the stitches lay flatter and twist up less. So uh, by, by pulling them apart, by separating them and putting them back together. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that even though I had the right amount of threads already. It's a little weird extra step, but the amount of time saved by pulling out all the threads like that versus holding the two ends and just trying to pull them apart slowly, uh, I, think, I think it's worth it. Oh, you like variegated flosses, gives a lot of texture to the piece. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Oh, thanks, Irene. Yeah, I mean, I think that a whole away knot thing, I'm just trying to pick up my needle from the table. Um, that whole away knot and weaving in the ends, I mean, that really cleans up the back a lot. And, and I just try not to jump around so much. I try and uh, weave in the ends and uh, start fresh. Well, that's kind of why I like mapping things out too, because I don't want to do like a big leap in the back. I want to kind of go wherever it's easiest to connect next. All right, so we only have to do the away knot that first time when we don't have any other stitches on the board, but uh, now we can actually we can actually start stitching we can weave in the ends here and then start stitching, but I'm just trying to map this out again. What would be the best way to do this? I was thinking I could start here and then jump over here right away. Yeah, maybe we do that. I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna leap over the back of this um, cardinal. Since we colored it in, you're not gonna see the stitches anyway, I don't think. So I'll do this, then come back around, go up here, the center one, and then jump to here and go start going up that side. And then we'll have to get another couple pieces of thread, I think, to finish, finish the rest of this here. All right, so I'm gonna weave in my ends right there on the back. So going towards where I wanna start, and I'll leave a little end there. And then going away from that spot where I want to start. I'm just trying to really grab as many threads as I can here. And then towards again. So I'm going to end up with the three turns. I'm going to end up right where I want to start stitching. All right, and let's, we don't need that little end there. That's just going to get in our way. So I'm going to snip that and we are ready to start again. All right, doing this little bottom piece here. So I'm hoping to get this year, early in this year, some little uh, stitch videos together, just short and sweet stitch videos instead of these really, um, you know, these live, these live videos where I show you how to do different stitches. I wanna just do some short, sweet, easy reference stitch videos. So be on the lookout for those. And if you want me to do any particular stitch, just let me know for sure. Then I will get it on the list. All right, I'm gonna try and do this last part in two stitches. So far, I'm loving the stitching with the with the crayon. I think it's looking pretty cute. Right here's where I'm gonna just leap to the other side here. I don't really like to go make any bigger leap than what I just did, like across that cardinal there. I try and keep that as minimal as I can. Toe, what did we call that? Oh man when the when the jump is too big toe catchers <laughs> i like that term they're toe catchers if if the leap is too big oh you like my wedding ring 
Um, we did not design it. Ooh, you designed yours. Oh, that's so cool. Um, we did get it from some small jewelers, though. So we feel like we were we were promoting artists when we were doing it. So that was neat. The way not seems to trip you up when you go to snip the and weave it in. You never feel like you have enough length. Yeah, you kind of do, you need about four inches or so uh, to weave it in. Uh, I know it sounds excessive, but you know, it's just floss. It's, and you know, if it makes your life easier by not having the knots on, like for me, the knots on the back, just my thread loops, you know, when I'm pulling, like coming up like this, these little loops, always for me would like if there's a knot here it would catch on the knot and get stuck and then I would do a bunch of stitches and not realize that I have this huge loop stuck on a knot so whenever I can uh, get rid of knots on the back I, I try and do it um, so yeah you might Gretchen you might just need a, to be that that jump from the way knot to where you start might just need to be a little bit bigger or you can weave it in a, a little less I would try that. But the nice thing is that after that first time, once you have sti stitches, you can just weave into the back of, of the stitches and then that will, um, that will, you know, you'll save thread there. But I don't know, I, I kind of think it's worth it to not have the knots on the back. The other thing I hate about knots are that, you know, it has the little ends, right? It has the little, end of the floss you know you have your knot and then the tiny little end whenever I'm stitching around that I always pull those little short ends to the front and it drives me nuts so this this avoids that altogether as well the weaving in the ends so there are some areas on this because we colored it in I'm gonna have to refer back to the pattern to see my lines like like um, the eyeballs on these little cardinals for example like I can't really see where those dots were so I'm gonna have to refer back to to the printed pattern for that just to just to see where those are at I think everything else I can see okay. I mean, on this red, I did cover up the lines quite a bit there, but I can still see them enough. Enough to do my stitching. All right, that's the end of the bottom. Let's jump up and I'm gonna just do as much of this line as I can with the rest of my floss. Actually, I think we'll have, we'll have enough floss for that. Oh. I don't know where to go next on my little road map. Can't go far with just this much floss left. Will you be doing French knots for the bird's eyes? I'm oh seed beads. That's a cute idea. No, I'm just gonna do French knots. Uh, but I love the seed bead idea. Man, I have not done beading and embroidery for ages and ages that would be kind of kind of a fun thing to do I used to do that a lot um, when I was younger I used to do a lot of bead bead related things like beaded bracelets and yeah stitching and embroidering with beads man I have all my beads from back in the day too I should bring those out sometime and we'll do some sort of some sort of beading project that'd be fun ever tried an inline knot to start your thread I have not I'll have to look up what that is yeah that'd be fun that'd be fun to do some some beading and embroidery we'll have to think of a project to do for that man I'll have to get a little refresher on that. That's been ages and ages. Okay, I um, before I make this last stitch, I'm gonna map out where I wanna go to next. So I only have this much thread left. Let's see. 
I think I'm gonna dig myself a little bit of a hole here, but I could, I could go around this box area here and then I could start the next thread like here. Oh wait, I could start the next thread here, go up and around and back down and maybe here and then the last thread go around like that maybe. Okay, we're gonna do that. It'll be not a perfectly mapped out deal, but I think we'll be okay. I think those little decorative circles in there, I think I'm going to make the outline for those like a yellow. Use the seed beads in the middle of the flowers. Oh, how sweet. Oh, and the snowflakes and stuff. Oh, that'd be cute. I think I'm going to use uh, metallic floss for the snowflakes. And you know, we have all these little French knots and little X's that are supposed to kind of be, I don't know, like snowflakey too. I think I might, I think I might get out the silver, uh, the silver metallic floss that I have and I'll make all of these X's and dots silver. And then I think I'll stitch over these bigger snowflakes with silver. And then we have those little, little V's on top of the, the house here. I think I might make those silver as well. So we'll kind of have all these blues surrounded by this little silverness. That sounds fun to me. I think that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Get the house done and then then I think we'll maybe do the cardinal next and uh, then make that silver floss decision. <laughs> that's still a little bit of a question mark in my head so I'm kind of kind of leaving it go. But I like the idea of metallics being in here. Although, oh man, I don't know, that metallic floss, it's a little hard to work with and I don't know if I want to make all those French knots uh, with that metallic floss. I'll have to think about that a little bit. Ooh, I could do, a, ooh, a white strand in the silver. That'd be kind of interesting. Oh, I kind of like that. That's kind of interesting. I haven't mixed threads like that together before. All right, I have a little bit more, so I'm just going to, go up the side of this house a little bit, or side of the roof. I'm rotating the hoop around just however it's easiest for this hand to hold the piece and kind of feel, feel the back of the stitches. I always like my left hand, or my back hand to be touching the stitches and touching the needle when it goes in and out just so I can always have an assessment of what's What's going on? If there's a knot that pops up, my left hand should be able to feel it right away. And um, I find that super helpful. Oh man, I think, I think I might be able to get one more stitch out of here, but that's kind of pushing it. And yeah, we're gonna have to weave in this end now. Out of floss. Ooh, two white strands on blue strand. Man, I, I'm gonna have to try um, I don't know if I'll do that on this project, but I'm going to have to try a project where I blend thread together like that. I haven't done that, but that just sounds, sounds like a fun experiment for sure. I have not done that before. All right. There we go. I'm going to drop him. All right. There we go. Snip. And... Where'd that floss go? This is the same floss, right? <laughs> Just threw it back in there. All right, I, I'll need, you know, I'll need quite a bit yet. Maybe not as much as the first time, but you know, I can save any extra. It's only floss if I use it up, that's the whole point, right? Let's snip that. Eh, I could have probably gotten a longer piece again, oh well being conservative tonight with, with my floss. All right, so I'm gonna just grab that one strand again. And this, this technique does not work if you grab more than one strand. Like if you're doing two strands, 
it, you're gonna just end up with a huge knotted mess. So just go one at a time. It'll it'll uh, be a whole lot easier. Oh, you've mixed thread for machine embroidery. Ooh. Oh, for hair and snowman. Oh, that's so interesting, Bonnie. I'll have to um, give that a go sometime. Ooh, that is neat for like thread painting or something on the machine using a couple colors. I like that. <laughs> interesting. All these new fun things I have to have to try out. Oh, you guys, I just wanted to, before I forget, uh, I have an email going out tomorrow morning and I will be talking about this fabric sale in the, in the, um, in the email and uh, also my schedule, like my holiday schedule, when I'll be, I'm gonna be off Facebook Live for a little bit. And uh, I wanted to give you guys those dates and stuff, but I do have the, the Penguin and Fish uh, last chance, I think, uh, fabric sale scheduled. So you'll wanna check your email for that. And it's gonna be in December still. So um, you'll wanna you know, make sure you're aware of it. I'm still kind of figuring it out a little bit, but uh, we'll do it here on, on Facebook Live and I'll show you guys all the fabric and everything. So this is fabric from my last, from all my collections. I, when I cleaned my, uh, not clean, but when I organized my fabric, I realized I had a whole lot more of my, uh, the penguin and fish fabric that, that I designed. Um, I have way more yards of that than I could ever use <laughs> from collections and collections. I think I have, oh gosh, like nine or 10 collections worth. And you know, each of the collections have like 12 to like 18 different fabrics in the collection. So I have like gobs of this fabric. And, uh, but you know, even though I have a lot of the fabric, I only have about, you know, like six, well, maybe even less, like 10, 10 or less yards. Some I only have a couple yards of left. So it's a lot of fabric, but it's all different. And it's all basically all that exists anymore, really. Every once in a while you can find, find it, you know, someone selling it on Etsy or something like that, but um, it's all out of print and kind of hard to find. So uh, if you've been looking for some penguin and fish fabric for a while, um, then, then you'll uh, want to tune in. You don't think you get the emails? Oh, so um, great question. If you want to get on my emails, I have a link in this Facebook post here. Um, that will be a sign up for the email list and it's, you also get a free pattern with it as well. So I think I have in like big bold letters in this Facebook post, um, where to get the free, I think I'm going to go down here, where to get the, the free pattern in the email. I know, yeah, that white and blue idea for the snowflakes would be really neat. I think I'm gonna do the silver metallic, but but we'll see. But yeah, so if you don't get the, I mean, like it's best to get the emails because that's usually where I explain everything. I, I toy with the ideas here with you guys and um, just cause I'm kind of ruminating on them yet and stuff and you guys always have good ideas. And uh, then I flesh them out and talk about things more in depth in the in my emails. So it'd be it's good to get on those. I'm not doing this, but finally I finished the huge T-shirt quilt. Nice, congrats, Michelle. Man, always good to feel, or always feels good to to um, to finish something like that and a big quilt too. Pretty nice. Oh man, I'm just going to get myself in a trap with 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 this mapping out. I'm going to end up like 
going down this line and not being able to make it the whole way or something, I don't know. Oh well, we'll figure it out. I do like the idea of putting some silver for these little V's that are in, in the uh, roof here. Especially if we put silver around the outside, then that'll kind of bring it to the center area too. Oh, good night, Deborah. Thank you. Hi, you'll review with your morning cup of coffee. Sounds nice. Man, that cup of coffee is the reason I get up in the morning. <laughs> oh, man. Yep, it's only floss. Oh, Bonnie, Carol Johnson won, won the, the giveaway. I think I, um, I, think I mentioned it on, on Friday, if I remember right. I'm not sure if she's on today though. But yeah, that was for the, the Thermoweb giveaway for the I Love Home quilt. All right, I'm gonna try and go down this row here and make it all the way down with this, this thread. I think I can, I think I'll just make it there. And then we have the last bit of floss I gotta do. Oh, and I gotta do this little guy in there too. Forgot about him, the little, uh, the, what, what would I call that? The perch, I always forget that word. That's the perch. We'll use the same color floss for that. Oh yeah, we're gonna have enough floss for, for this line, that's good. <laughs> you guys are nice. But yeah, so check out the um, email that I'll send tomorrow. And um, then uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in tomorrow's Facebook Live. All right, man, I had a lot extra. I'm gonna just weave it in and, and stop it there though. So the next one I'm gonna go that bottom and then I'll, like, I'll think I'll just kind of like jump over there to the, um, that perch. This floss is pretty. I like it. It's like teal blue jeans almost. The gray and the teal together. All right. And here's our last bit of this. And I'll separate the three strands again and put them back together. Just to avoid, avoid that twisting. Why not? Oh, you're in love with these snowflakes. That's nice, Gretchen. Are you stitching the snowflakes right now? You were working on it uh, at the same time, I think, right? All right. Okay, needle. Oh, fun. Yeah, I was thinking about starting with the border and doing the snowflakes, but I'm like, man, if I do that house, I'll, I'll feel like I got a lot done. All right, let's see. I think I'll start here, go up and down here, and then, I don't know, I don't usually like to jump behind this far, but I might just say who cares and do it anyway. Uh, all right, I'm gonna weave in right there. One, two, hey, you couldn't wait, nice. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just still kind of deciding on metallics and, and all that. So I'm like, you know what? I know I want to do this first, I, I know I want to do the house blue. So let's just start with the, 
the blue house. Oop, missed one. Okay. There, that's more comfortable. I pause with, oh, it's skipping tonight, oh no. That's a bummer, Grace. Have a good evening. All right. So what should I do after this blue? I'm wondering if I should do the rest. I, I think I'll do the rest of the house first. I might save like those little silver Vs till the end um, when I'm doing the other silver. If, if I do use the metallic silver, I'm gonna do that last just cause it can be kind of annoying and um, yeah, that's a good thing to save to last. And it just adds that little sparkle at the end which will be fun to do right at the end. Um, so I think maybe next I'll do like these little yellow, I don't know, V's or not V's, little yellow diamonds and the blue or the purple circles and then the cardinals. So we'll just do this whole middle area before tackling the outside area. I think, I think that'll be the plan, except for the, this, um, silver in the roof. We'll do that. Um, we'll do that once we pull out the silver. Oh man, I don't know if I'll have enough thread to do the whole perch too. Maybe I'll try and conserve my floss a little bit here by doing that other sort of backstitch. I don't think this backstitch looks as nice, but you do one backstitch like that. So um, going backwards before going forward. And Oh, when you separate the strands, if you tap lightly on the top, it will separate quite easy. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that next time. But so I did one back stitch and now I'm going in the same hole that uh, that one came out of and I'm doing a forward stitch. So I'm doing like a back stitch, then a forward stitch, then back stitch, and then a forward stitch. And that can sometimes save a little, it can kind of conserve the floss a little bit. But I, sometimes it just, doesn't look as nice. Like coming up here through the stitch, it sometimes can bubble that stitch upward. And I just think it doesn't look quite as consistent, but when you need to get a few more stitches out of a piece of floss, then that's next. I'm gonna do the perch in the same color that I'm using here. I'm gonna actually just weave in the ends and then jump over there. I don't usually like to jump over a big white area like that, but, I think I'm gonna just do it anyway. Luckily, you know, since we've color tinted it, I have um, a little bit of guard from, from you being able to see it. I mean, you can kind of, you can kind of see the jump a little bit, but it's not, not so bad. Let's see, what's the best way to stitch this guy? Get this little, little oval. Oh my gosh, I do not think I'm gonna have enough floss for this. Oh, that's gonna be the worst. All right, I'm gonna have to really try and conserve this floss. It would not be fun to have to start a whole new floss for this. I think we'll make it. We'll use some bigger stitches, I think. Oh yeah, we'll actually have tons of floss. This is this is gonna be fine. I can do this in like three stitches. Get the other side of the perch and another three stitches. We'll have plenty of floss. It just looked looked a little, little bit bigger than I thought. All right, I'm gonna do this in like two little stitches so I can get that curve of the other side of the perch in there. I think I'll do these circles purple, like how they are. Actually, I could really do those the same color blue maybe, but I think we'll, we'll grab some purple just for fun. 
kind of match what we colored with, with our stitches. All right, one more, and we got this perch with tons of floss left over. That's nice. All right. Oh, it's coming together like you can see. I mean, it really has the dimension now a little bit. Um, you know, it's just so much more defined because it's because it's outlined now. We can see the different planes and stuff a little bit better. I think once we get these cardinals stitched in, we're, it's really going to start uh, coming together. Uh, all right, let's weave this in. Weave it to these little perch stitches. And I think we might, well, yeah, I think, I think now is probably the best time to stop. Maybe, um, maybe before we, since we have a few minutes left, let's, uh, let's pick some colors for, for what we'll do tomorrow. So I want to pick. I think I want to pick these like yellow areas here. I want to pick those purple uh, blobs, the the holes, and then maybe even the cardinal here. And I'd still love to use some variegated floss. So let's let's put this guy back in here. Ooh, this is an awfully pretty purple right next to it. It has it's kind of crazy, but it has a lot of those blues and everything in. That's kind of fun. It kind of matches this pink up here too a little bit. All right, I think we're just gonna go go for that. So that's the purple. Um, this maybe I have some kind of yellows in here. Maybe a little yellow with some green. I don't know if I have one like that. Maybe we go even more green. Oh yeah, aren't these fun? Oh, that's kind of pretty. Ooh, I kind of like that. I'll show you guys up close. I would have never really guess that but it's kind of gray and green but it is a lot like this and I and I think like these two together like look how pretty those are together okay love it let's do those two and then I need to find like a really good cardinal color and none of these I mean this is okay it's a little dark though let's see what else we can do here there's a lot of good colors here maybe this corally pink color. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. It's a little orangey. Maybe it's a little too orangey. I need a good red. Yeah, nothing in there. I think that might be it for my variegated. Here, I got a whole red area. I'll show you guys the silver then too. So here's my, my red bin. I have so many colors it's so fun all right um i just need a really good cardinal color although now that i'm looking at these these are awfully pretty too um let's try and get like a little a rich red but not super dark i don't know i'm kind of leaning towards this guy right here <laughs> Ooh, but that, that might be a little bright. Let's try and go a little, there, this is a little, um, a little bit redder, or not so bright, but it's also pretty dark. This might be too dark for this cardinal. Ooh, or it might just really make it pop. Okay, maybe I do like that. I don't wanna make the inside look so, pink though either and I think the darker I go with this the uh, pinker the rest is going to seem I just want to see what this looks like oh I kind of you know this isn't like a perfect red but it's kind of like it goes with the teal and this purple and this weird green okay I think we're going to use this weird salmony Oh, it's called grapefruit. Um, this weird salmony color. I think, I think the trio of these with the teal looks super cool. So where that? Oh, I think I put the teal away, but it was kind of like this. 
it was like a lighter version than this. I think those look so like sherbety and cute. All right, those are our colors. So I got those ready for tomorrow. I'll plop these away quick. And this is, that was just really bright. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with those three. So I'm hoping tomorrow we can get, hopefully we can get this whole inside done tomorrow. So we'll do, we'll probably start with these little purple guys and then uh, these yellow guys, and then we'll finish with the cardinal. And then, you know, I still have those black little eyeballs to, to put into. So we'll try and do that as well. I don't know, that's maybe a lot to get done in one evening, but that's the plan. And then, uh, then we'll work at this outside. This would be cute. So I gotta keep these out because I think these would be really cute for some of these leaves. Like that would be pretty and, or even for the holly. And this could be our red for all these outside dots. So I gotta make sure to keep, keep these colors together. Even the purple for like the branches or something, that would be kind of cute. But all right, there we are for tonight. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys the silver really quick too. So here are my metallics. Uh, we got a whole different pile of silvers. Um, this one I think I've used a bit. So it's so sparkly. Isn't that pretty? Look at how shiny it is. Oh, here, let's see all these together. So we could go like that. I do actually, now that I'm looking at this, I do have kind of a blue sparkly. We could do that for the snowflake so it's more blue than silver. I also have variegated sparkly silver too. This this might be the way to go. It kind of is sherbet and matches our, um, our roof there. That's, uh, that's kind of cute. Um, Tracy, I think I may only be here tomorrow night yet. So I'll talk more about that in my email. So, um, make sure to get on the email list. But yeah, I think tomorrow is probably my last night for a little while. So, um, based on how much we got done tonight, I am not positive that we'll make it all the way through. Um, we might have to pick this up again, but I'm going to get as far as we can tomorrow. You know what? I'm going to hold on to this one out here. Ooh, look at this one though, too. This one's like gold and colorful. We could do gold in here too, but I think we're, I think we're leaning more towards this blue, this blue world versus this gold world. I'm just going to let this guy hang out here too. Although just straight silver is always, always pretty. I don't know. I'll let I'll let both of those hang out and we can we can decide later. But all right, that is the plan. I'm going to actually take this out for the evening. I always like taking the embroidery out of the hoop so it doesn't crease the fabric as much. So let's pop that out. All right. There we go. Oh, and let's put my needle get Zeb here out and Get the needle back in there. Okay, guys, I am going to flip you around and we'll call it a night. I mean, look how defined this is compared to what we only have colored in. So far, that that uh, stitching really adds so much to this. I am excited to, to get this little birdie done and stuff. I think it'll be just so darling. All right, I'm going to flip you around. Hello again. So here we are. Oh, it is looking cute. I just love this color tinting. Look, it just is so sweet. It is just one little extra layer of, of fun to it. So I'm going to do this more for sure. Um, what am I going to do on the rooftop edges? I think I'm going to do that silver. So that uh, all this all this stuff up here, I think I'm going to do like little uh, little sparkly Vs. That or, or, you know, here's that more silver version. I think, oh gosh, I really like this super silvery stuff, but I haven't ever used this variegated silver. So that might be kind of fun too. I don't know. We'll have to decide. This might just be a completely variegated floss, um, variegated floss uh, project. So we'll see. 
But all right, guys, I will get this up onto YouTube tonight if you wanted to watch tomorrow or whenever. It'll be up there forever. It is Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. And I hope you subscribe if you're over there. Uh, I think when you subscribe, you actually get an email when when the post is available. So that'll, that'll help uh, you guys know if you wanted to watch it again. And I will be here again tomorrow. Uh, and be sure to check your emails uh, tomorrow morning morning, early afternoon-ish. So thanks again. See you tomorrow. Good night.